This is Pastor Tom Arnold welcoming you to the Good News Radio broadcast. On today's program, I'd like to share with you a message that focuses upon some of the benedictions that are found in the New Testament. The word benediction means to speak well of. I sincerely believe that this message will enrich your life. Join me for part three of the message, Biblical Benedictions. Thank you for joining us for this edition of the Good News Radio Broadcast with Pastor Tom Arnold. Tom serves as pastor of Good News Church in Yukon, Oklahoma, and is our teacher on this daily program. It is his desire that you will discover God's abundant plan for every aspect of your life through the faithful study of God's Word. Join us now as we go into today's message. These are some wonderful benedictions. Now, here's another good one. This is in 2 Peter, chapter number 1. These are a benediction from Peter. And this is a wonderful blessing. And it says in 2 Peter, chapter 1, it says, May grace and peace be multiplied to you in the knowledge of God and our Lord Jesus Christ. Here's the benediction. Not only the grace and peace being multiplied, but notice this. His divine power has granted you granted to us all things that pertain to life and godliness through the knowledge of him who called us to his own glory and excellence. So what do we say? Lord, thank you. I bless them. I thank you that your divine power has granted unto them everything they need that pertains to life and godliness. So Lord, I just speak that over them. Everything they need. Divine power has been imparted into their life. Many times we're praying for things that in the eyes of God already belong to us. We're praying for things that in the eyes of God exist because of the new birth and the new creation. So these are, these are good things that we can speak. Now, I'm going to have a few more here I'm going to share with you today. First Thessalonians chapter 5. This is a prayer that, a benediction rather, that Paul spoke to the Thessalonians. And it says, now may the God of peace himself sanctify you completely Hear this, may your whole spirit, your soul, and your body be kept blameless at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. Now, isn't that interesting? He prayed over the spirit of man. He prayed over the soul, the mind, the will, the emotions, the personality. He prayed over the soul of man, and he prayed over the body of a man. Started in the innermost part and worked his way out. I pray in the name of Jesus that the Lord would sanctify you wholly. Your spirit, your soul, and your body would be kept blameless at the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. How do you pray for somebody you know they're struggling in their spiritual walk? You know they're not walking in the light that they have. Spiritually, they're not walking in the light of the truth. Lord, I thank you that you sanctify them wholly. I thank you, Lord, that their whole spirit, their whole soul, and their whole body will be kept blameless unto the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. Did you know, y'all, that's a whole lot better than whining and begging and scratching and you know, if you're not careful, you can be in a church environment. I kind of, you know, I traveled a lot when I was college age and spoke in churches, and I found like there was one common denominator. In the groups I was at, if God's going to do it, he can do it, but it's going to be real hard. <laughs> it, God can do anything, but it, I tell you, if we're going to pray, it's going to be hard to pray. And if we, in other words, the reason why it's hard sometime, because we just don't know the combinations. <laughs> you know, if I'm working on a, a lock and there's three numbers and I'm off on one of them, I can keep working that combination and I can get frustrated and just exasperated, but maybe it, Somebody else can walk up to that same lock and do it just perfect, and it's a whiz, and they just open it up and walk in. And I think that's the way it is in prayer sometimes. Some people, they just don't struggle in that. They just say, Lord, I believe that I receive that, and I just declare that in the name of Jesus, that, Father, you are sanctifying them holy. I praise you, Father, that their whole spirit, their whole soul, and their whole body is preserved blameless at the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, here's what I'm going to tell you. Did you know not everybody that presents a prayer request to you, you're going to be able to go off and have a 30-minute prayer meeting? So, oh, they, they've turned in a prayer request. I need to, I need to get away from everybody. 
you need to redeem time. You need to realize, hey, I can't get away from everybody right now, but there's something I can do right now. There's a way I can speak over that situation. There's something I can do that's still a positive. It's still a helpful to the situation. The biggest thing is instead of us being in fear, it puts us in a position of faith. We just say that, Lord, I bless in the name of Jesus. So that's how we can pray for somebody that we know that's struggling in their Christian walk and they're, you know, they're not walking in the light. That's the scriptural term. And we just say, Lord, thank you for working in their life, sanctifying them, making them who they ought to be. Thank you for flooding them with light. Thank you that the eyes of their understanding is enlightened in their life, Lord. Now, I'm going to give you another really good one. Romans chapter number 15. This is a benediction of the Apostle Paul. Romans chapter 15 and verse number 13. Romans chapter 15 and verse number 13. It says this, May the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing, so that by the power of the Holy Spirit you may abound in hope. You know, a lot of times whenever I send a message to somebody or an email or something, I'll just say, joy and peace. How many know at 2.30 in the afternoon in the thick of a struggle, it's not always joy and peace? People say, wait a minute, it isn't Christmas time. Why are you talking about joy and peace? Did you know joy and peace isn't limited to the Christmas season? It's all year round. Isn't it interesting that he said, this is the benediction, that God will fill you with all joy and all peace while you're believing God? Because let's face it, if you're believing the Lord for something, there can be times that fighting the fight of faith can be tiring. Standing your ground against the enemy can be just exhausting. You know, Tony tells a story when he was on a ventilator for nine days, nine days, and he says, here I am dealing with this. And he said, Lord, I'm just so weak. And he said, the Lord immediately spoke to him, when you're weak, I'm strong. So God hears and he sees that side of it. So there's the fight of faith that wears people out. So I just want to emphasize to you, what's a good way of blessing that you can speak over people? Lord, thank you for filling them with joy and peace in their believing. And if there's ever a time that the body of Christ has got to have joy and peace, it's the day we're living in right now. But I got a little P.S. When Paul wrote this, things were just as crazy in the Roman world as they are right now. Does that make sense? In other words, not like Paul wrote this and he was at the Hyatt Regency and he was, you know, out by the pool and a couple of people were bringing him corn dogs and he was just enjoying. I mean, you know, he was going through challenges. But in the midst of all that, he's talking about joy and peace. Y'all, joy is in the Lord. It's not in the circumstance. And if you wait for ideal, perfect situation, you're never going to have a good day. You're going to get about three or four. You know, when you lived in Oklahoma for a while, you don't talk about the days the wind's blowing. You talk about the day, hey, the wind's not blowing. Did you notice the wind didn't blow today? It's kind of nice, isn't it? I mean, you don't talk about the day, hey, it's kind of windy today. It's like, duh, you know, it's always one day. But it's the days that, hey, it's kind of nice. The wind's not even blowing. So you can't have this attitude. When it all calms down, you mark it down, Pastor. I'm going to come on in that church. I'm going to get my praise on. You know, when the team was ministered, Holly and Joe David were preparing. They were singing. I got here this morning, and I come in the back of the sanctuary, and I act like I was running. I act like I was doing my Jericho, you know, run around the church. You know, anybody can run whenever... It's all great, but y'all, we've got to keep the joy and the peace whenever the wind's blowing, the storm's here, and we're going to have the joy of the Lord in the midst of it. So, by the power of the Holy Spirit, we abound with hope. So, that's a benediction. Now, I got another one here, and I'm going to emphasize this one, and, and let's go over to Ephesians chapter 3 and verse number 20. This is a benediction. Most of you have maybe recited this at one time or another. Maybe you've committed it to memory. But it's a benediction that Paul gave, and it's him pronouncing blessing over the people. Ephesians 3 and 20 says, Now to him who is able 
to do far more abundantly than all we ask or think. So God's able to do exceedingly, abundantly, above all that we ask or think. Now, I could have admitted this to memory in the King James. So could you put it up in the King James and we'll, we'll read this together. Ephesians chapter 3 and verse number 20. And I just want us to say this together. I want you to say, thank you, Lord. You're able to do exceedingly abundantly above everything I ask or think. Do you see how faith building that is? When you get in a situation and it's looking bad and say, Lord, I just thank you. I pronounce that. You're able to do exceedingly abundantly above everything I can ask or think. There's times that the blessings are beyond us. I can't pull this off. This had to be God. I couldn't engineer this one. This was the work of the Lord. You know, people might, well, how did you get that job? It was exceedingly, abundantly above all I could ask for that. I mean, how did you get that? How did you find that? Or how did you get in that situation? Because, you know, people want to get close to you, and they want to know, I want to do what you did. But here's when you tell them this part of the story. Well, here's what I did. I put God first, and I sought first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and I did that for about 12 years straight. And they go, okay, that's all I need to know. I'm on the... Man, that just happened overnight. And you say, yeah, it was a long night. It was about 12 year night. You know? you know, sometimes people look at somebody's blessed and they go, hey, I, well, how did you do that? Hey, tell me, I want to learn your secret. Yeah, here is my secret. It's called be faithful to God. The faithful man will abound with blessings. Oh, I didn't want that. Man, I need to, I need some shortcuts. You know, there's probably things as a pastor, you know how people, things bother different people different times. You know what bothers me is when I feel like people are trying to get in on a blessing, but they want to do every shortcut imagine. They don't want to, okay, oh, I need to be faithful. Oh, no, I didn't want to do that. I need to walk in love. No, I don't want to do that. God is still able to do exceedingly abundantly above all you ask or think. Now, I think all of us know, it's a foregone conclusion, heaven is abundantly above all we can ask or think. It is. Heaven is beyond. People this year have gone to be with the Lord, This, when I say within the past 12 months, that we know in this church. Not one of them is in heaven going, well, this isn't quite what I thought it would be. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? They're not going, mm, I don't know. I, I was kind of thinking the brochures looked a little better than us, you know. <laughs> you know what Don Wade's doing right now? Don Wade's saying, oh, my Lord, this place is over the top. Thanks for joining me for this message titled Biblical Benedictions. All of us have been in situations in which we didn't know how best to pray over our loved ones in their time of need. The good news is that the Bible is filled with examples of benedictions that we can read and speak that will release supernatural peace and comfort into their lives. Thank you for listening to today's message. You can hear this message again by visiting online at goodnewschurch.tv. To listen to this and many other messages by Pastor Tom, download the Good News Church mobile device app by searching for Good News Church Yukon through both the iTunes and Android stores. Through the website, you can also subscribe to the podcast. Pastor Tom invites you to visit Good News Church whenever you are in the greater Oklahoma City area. Good News is located at the intersection of Main Street and the Yukon Parkway in Yukon. He welcomes you to worship with them on Sundays at 10 a.m. Good News Church, it's a great place to be.